I've got some fans. Take your seats. I'm going to get rid of this if that's okay because it's very distracting when it's not working. Great. Ah, oh, got the harness off. Here we go. See if I can ride this horse here. Cool. We're at the last week of the relationship series. Uh, congratulations. You got there. Hopefully you didn't run out screaming at any point. And, um, and tonight, I guess, is uh, it's going to be a collection of thoughts that uh, I think are just keys that are helpful things. And uh, I do recognize, as I have, I just want to say right from the beginning of the series, you know, you're always talking to a broad range of people. You know, so you've got people here that are keenly interested on get in, interested in getting in a relationship, a romantic sort of relationship. You've got people who have no interest in that or are too young for that or maybe they've been there, done that, and they're not interested in going back there or whatever. People that are currently in a happy relationship, people that might be currently in a not-so-happy relationship. I understand there's a broad range, but I, I think there's stuff in this series. There's principles that should help us all at at different stages of the journey, and I'm hoping tonight we'll do that once again. And uh, I do need to say, and just reiterate, this, this series has come out now, I guess we've been doing this for five or six years, or might even be seven or eight years. I'm not sure. It's a long time now. I know that I've married quite a few couples since we started doing this. Last year, I, I married seven couples myself, and and other pastors in the church married other couples. And I think one of the greatest, um, one of the greatest testimonies of maybe just building your life the way God wants you to is is what we've seen collectively through the great bulk of those couples. Maybe over the last five years, I don't know, maybe we've married 30 or 40 couples that, that are maybe just the younger ones. If I left all the older ones out, just the young couples. And, uh, and to see them, so many quality marriages in the community of the church now, just so many people doing it well, and young people that are absolutely happy and, and have a sense of confidence that this is going to work for life. And I think ultimately that's what we all really want when we think about relationships, even if our experience hasn't been great, even if things that have been modeled to us haven't been great. Many of us would have been affected uh, in our own families of origin by things like divorce or maybe even abuse, other things like that, uh, where we might not, you know, we might not have had the best modeling and the best view of it but I think in our heart of hearts we'd all like to think that it could work we might not be sure whether it will but we'd like to think that it could and uh, am I alone in that you're very quiet tonight I've already got you I've already got you hooked there we go uh, and so we're gonna we're gonna stroll along here M uh, mums and dads it will be sort of a guess m rating maybe just a light m rating on tonight so if you've got smaller kids uh just, just be ready to debrief them after this if you want to keep them in here. Uh, so relationship goals, that's what we're talking about. Relationship goals, actually worthy goals. You know, like everyone's got goals like, oh, I, want, I hope he drives a BMW or something like that, or I hope they've got the latest mobile phone or whatever. Um, I'm not talking about those kind of relationship goals. I hope they've got a, a social media presence. Uh, I'm not talking about those sort of goals. I'm talking about worthy goals. I mean, goals that, that really matter, goals that will really help you into your future, real goals. And so, of course, uh, we've been looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, which is the most famous passage in the Bible on love. It actually describes love as literally a doing word, not a feeling. Our society has a very shallow, very narrow view of what love is. It's all about feelings and emotions, and, uh, and certainly that's part of it. But that is, that is not necessarily the biggest part. And feelings and emotions, that part of love is certainly not will, what, what will carry you through the difficult times and through the tests of time. And so uh, I want to read this passage again. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 8. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, 
always hopes and always perseveres. And then the last phrase, the Apostle Paul says, love never fails. Love is a good thing. It's a powerful thing, love. And if you get it right in this area of relationships, man, it, uh, it makes all the difference. So relationship goal, week five, goal number five is determine to live God's way. Just as an individual, we've talked about relationship goals and what you're looking for in the other person and a certain amount of how you should treat the other person. And we'll continue that tonight. But now I just want to talk to us about how we live individually, because at the end of the day, a relationship is just the sum total of two individuals. So live God's way. It always protects. This is love. Always trusts, always hopes, perseveres. Love never fails. Love is an amazing thing. But there are some things about godly relationships that I've learned that uh, I can't take for granted that people just understand. Some things that I think just seem pretty plain are not always plain, especially in our society and how sort of emotionally fueled, sexually charged our society is, and also broken. So broken becomes the new normal if we're not careful. What might have once been a social extreme is then celebrated often in the art forms of media and movies, etc. And what was once an extreme becomes mainstream. And so we can no longer sort of just assume everyone understands what conducting yourself godly really is. So some of this is going to, you know, maybe address the influences of the world around us. Some of it's going to just simply address who we are as individual people and our response to our sense of wanting to follow Jesus. So here we go. Uh, When I say, you know, you can't assume that, I, I always use this example. The American Declaration of Independence, the the, the most famous line in that document, the beginning of it reads something like this, we hold these truths to be self-evident. After that document outlines all kinds of things about social justice and equality of humanity, it then says we hold that these truths are self-evident. What self-evident means is it doesn't need any proving. It doesn't need any external sense of justification. It's just pretty obvious. Um, And then you look at the Americans and see how they get that wrong. Even their own Declaration of Independence, and it's not to pick on them, it's just human nature. That some things that should be obvious, we find it hard to live them. Um, And so, uh, I, I want to look at a few things that I think should be self-evident, but they aren't necessarily. And uh, the first one is for all the single people here. Woo! Come on, celebrate. Woo! First thought is it's okay to be single. Single is not a disease. Okay? And that's, that should be self-evident, but I think in our society, often it's not. Often our society, not always, but often, it projects the concept that you can't be happy or possibly fulfilled unless you're with someone. And I thought about this, and I thought, ironically, even movies that try and address this subject, and, and uh, that we've all seen movies where there's that awkward single, or that person in that awkward single stage, and they're not happy to be there, and And the whole movie unfolds and and they're trying to wrestle with their singleness. And when I think about it, most of the movies I could think of off the top of my hat, they always end with that person somehow finding some obscure connection with someone. They don't end with them just being happy, single. They generally end with, oh, they finally found someone and now they can be happy. And it's this subtle thing that just says to us that there's something wrong, but but actually being single is great. Paul says this about being single uh, of his own life. He says, For I wish that all men were even as myself, but each one has his own gift from God, one in this manner and another in that. And he's talking in the context of marriage, and, and Paul was a single man. And he's actually saying, I wish everyone had this gift. I'm happy. I've learned to be content the way I am. And it is a gift, man, a gift from God. 
your single years, even if it's only for a season, I want to really encourage you to get happy. Paul goes on to say, I want you to be without care. He who is unmarried cares for the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he who is married cares about the things of the world, how he may please his wife. And, and that's okay. Paul's not knocking marriage. He's just saying, as a matter of fact, there's an added bonus in your single years. You are actually, you have undivided attention. And these are the years to really make hay where the sun shines and give your whole self to God and put a dent in the universe for Jesus' sake. Being single is a gift. Don't wish it away. That's what I'd encourage you. Being single, it's a unique season of your life. Uh, You might not have it for long, so embrace it, get happy with it, enjoy the single years. You know, it's sad, but often we just spend our lives, when you think about it, if we're not careful, we spend our life just wishing ourselves out of the current season into the next. You know, I I was just at my son's graduation, formal, you know, on, on last week, and all these wonderful young people and they're launching out into the world and all the rest. But the fact of the matter is, you know, it's funny on those nights and in in that season, that last week of school where it's beginning to dawn on some kids that actually school wasn't as bad as I thought. You know, I had a lot of friends and now I've got to go find work and now I've got to pay my own bills and now, Reuben, now you're paying rent wherever you are. So you understand what I mean? Single years are good years. Don't wish them away. Don't spend your life wishing your life away. And and can I just encourage you, when it comes to being single, here's a fact. The more relaxed and secure you are as a single person, the more attractive you will look to the right kind of potential partner. Now, it doesn't mean you can frame it and just go, I'm just going to act all secure. No, that looks really ugly. I'm saying get secure, get happy, be happy single, pursue your single years, serve Jesus, and if it's going to happen, that is the best you're going to look. Is someone who's secure and has got a sense of purpose, has got a sense of destiny, and is just determined to go for it, and they don't need someone else's affirmation to try and make them feel better about themselves. That's the kind of person that looks particularly attractive when it comes to hanging out with, uh, with single people who might be potential future partners. So there's a little free key. Here's the thought. Singledom, if I could put it that way, is a great season of life. It's a great season of life. Here's another thought. In your relationships, these are all just general principles. In your relationships, aim for spiritual compatibility. Aim for spiritual compatibility. Again, Paul says this, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What communion has light with darkness? Now, Paul is not saying people are bad. What he's saying is people are different. Oil and water don't mix. And if you've got a heart for Jesus and for the kingdom of God and someone else really doesn't want anything to do with any of that stuff, then right at the very core of your beings, you are already on different pages. Don't get tied together in something like that. It always, always becomes very difficult. It always pulls one person one way or the other and resentment is usually the result. Now, one thing we see, I guess, amongst, you know, young communities particularly, is, uh, you know, the whole flirt and convert syndrome. It, it's often with the girls, I'll have to say girls, I'll just have to say, and it's like, uh, well, he's such a lovely guy, and even though he's not following Jesus yet, you know, I'm going to get him to church and he's going to get saved. I'll, t- I'll tell you some of the problems with that. Number one, you don't know if they put their hand up, you don't know whether they're saying yes to Jesus or I want the girl. And I've seen that one play out where it looked like it was yes to Jesus, but it was I want the girl. And then for the girl to stay in the relationship, she had to make it. She was the one who had to make a choice between whether it was Jesus or him. And often that goes for see you later, Jesus. I'm going with the boy. And often that leads to a relationship that doesn't have godly foundations 
and that crumbles and falls. And for the amount of times I've seen people go out with that because they're starry-eyed about their future and arrive back here three years later, burnt, saying that was the worst thing I've ever done, saying things like, I should have listened to you when you said, that's not the right relationship for you. So I just encourage you, be equally yoked when it comes to who you're connecting with. And listen, I'm not just talking about Christians. I don't mean they just go to Christian. Well, he goes to church or she goes to church. Well, the fact is, I sit at McDonald's. It doesn't make me a hamburger. So just because someone goes to church, I'm saying someone who is as committed as you, someone who knows Jesus the way you do. And, and that's the problem is love tends to make you want to overlook a lot of things and go, well, that's just, they're just different. Well, you know, you know when someone's on the same page, if you're, gonna, if you're able to be honest with yourself. Amos uh, 3.3, 3, the prophet says, how can two walk together unless they are agreed? And again, it's just that thought of, hey, make sure you're on the same page before you start something. Because later on, it becomes very, very hard to break away from that once something has started. And if you're not on the same page, it means someone's got to compromise. And it's usually the one who's really committed to Jesus. Seen so many destinies tied up, unreleased, even at times destroyed by people who are just connecting themselves to the wrong people. So much potential, and you look a year later, and because of a relationship, here's, here's one great key in a relationship, a great godly relationship that's with someone God wants you to be with will always make you a better person. It will always make them a better person. It will always make both of you more passionate about Jesus. So I'd encourage you. I've seen people forgo their true sense of destiny to be with someone that they felt in the moment they needed. And I've also seen others forsake everything, say no to great opportunities for relationship for the sake of the call and following Jesus and either end up with the perfect mate later down the track or alone but content, happy they've made a great decision. So I just encourage you, godly relationships, here's the key, are for with someone as committed to Jesus as you are. Is that okay? You doing okay? Okay. If you need to break up, break up well. <laughs> if you need to break, the fact is most relationships between particularly young people don't last. Uh, it's pretty likely that if you're a you know, fairly young person and, uh, and you're in a relationship that at some point you're either going to give the hard news or receive the hard news. That's just, that just goes with the territory of building relationships. Um, here's some do's and don'ts, though. Let's all agree right up front that text, email, or social media such as Facebook are never an appropriate means to end a relationship. Can we just agree on that? Unless maybe there's fear of abuse involved, like this could go really pear-shaped and I could be abused, then obviously it is wise for you to create distance. But outside of that, you just got to front up. Come on, if you were prepared to commit to the relationship, get someone involved with you, then you've got to give them the honor of actually talking to them face-to-face, -face, even when things are ending. Face-to-face -face is the respectful way to break up. Don't let, here's just the key, don't let emotions uh, hijack the conversation. Don't let anger or resentment get in that communication. Keep it as simple, keep it as factual, Keep it as clear as you can. Honesty is the best policy when it comes to breaking up without being intentionally hurtful. You know, you don't want to say to someone, well, I just find you now you've just turned incredibly ugly. Uh, you know, that's not nice. So be nice, but be honest. In regard to this, this is about you and how you feel. Don't make it about the other person. Take responsibility. Say, I am sorry, but this is how I now feel. You might have to say things like, I thought it was going to go there as well, but I've come to feel in this last bit of time that I can't see the future. I can't see us being together. I think it is best that we leave the relationship where it is and try and finish as friends. And as I've talked in previ previous weeks, if you're not overly connected sexually, physically in that relationship, that will be easy. If you are overly connected, 
If you are all hands over one another and all kinds of other things, you can expect heartbreak. It goes with the territory. You can expect lots of tears and lots of issues, and that's why we encourage you to maintain purity in your relationships. So you can go out with people, you can be friends, you can spend time, keep the whole thing above board, and if it isn't your future, you're both able to walk away, most likely able to stay friends. It's one of the few ways you can do it. Um, avoid on-again, off-again relationships. The whole on-again, off-again thing, and they can happen for a number of reasons, but they always end more painfully when they're on-again, off-again. Can I say this? The desire to let someone down slowly is well-intentioned, but rarely works. Rarely works. You're better off just saying, it is finished. It's over. We walk away and we can chew down on that and accept the hard fact and that will be the quickest route to both of you getting on with your lives. It just will be. Again, not being nasty, just being clear. For those of us here who are believers, can I just tell you, don't blame God. Oh, I was praying in the worship. I felt like the Holy Spirit said, break up with her now. So it's not my fault, you know, God, you'll have to go and take it up with God because it's not my fault. Oh, that's a load of hooey. Just take responsibility. Say, sorry, no, my heart has changed. My feelings have changed. My circumstance has changed. The way I think about things has changed. The way I think about you has changed. I'm sorry, but it's over. Don't blame God. Uh, and I just say this, and we'll probably throw it up on the board so you can read it, but if you're in a relationship and confused about what to do, talk to a mature leader or pastor about the process of either moving forward towards a healthy relationship. So if you're in a relationship right now and you're not happy where it's at, and even listening to the series, you've gone, man, we've done some things wrong, then talk to a pastor or leader about it and help get it healthy or decide to end it. You know, they might help you decide to end it. Often people are like trapped in a relationship. They don't want to be there, but they just don't want to be the one to finish it. They're waiting for someone to get the hint. That's not really kind. It might be well-intentioned, but it's not kind. Is that okay? Okay, and here we go. Last thought is what to do if you've blown it in any area. You know, I've talked a lot uh, right through the whole thing. Purity has been a theme. Um, doing things well, just some, even some of the things tonight. And you might be sitting there and going, well, that's all well and good, Pastor Chris, but actually it's a bit late for me. I've, I've already really cooked it. I've really done the wrong thing. I'm sitting here and this, these messages aren't making me feel any better about my circumstance. Can I just encourage you that there is grace? Like God's gracious. God's, God's on your side, even, even if you've really messed up, even if you've intentionally messed up. And you knew better already, but you did it anyway. You went ahead anyway. You know, God's still on your side. God still loves you. God, I think, better than us, understands the frailties of human nature. And, uh, and so I just want to encourage you, uh, out of Isaiah 61, this is talking about Jesus. It was written 600 years before Christ. It was prophetic. And uh, this is what Isaiah says. The Spirit of the Lord God, about Jesus, this Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And this is the ministry of Jesus. God is on your side, and more than any other thing, he wants to bring freedom to your life. He wants to bring healing to your life. He wants to get you in a good place, and every individual and anyone that I might have talked about in the context of tonight's message, 
God is on your side. God wants to get you into a good place where you're like planted and your roots go down deep and you're not wilting and you're not getting blown over by the storms, but you build a life and you build relationships and maybe even that one key relationship with that one key person for the rest of your life that lasts the distance and bears good fruit. And you get to enjoy the life that God wants you to build. And even if you've blown it, There's healing, there's the oil of joy for a spirit of heaviness. God wants to lift you up and put you back in a good place where you can get on and have another go and hopefully build it his way this time. Cool? You okay? Tonight okay? Okay, great. Well, can I pray for you then? Just before I do, just before we we, we will close, just before I do, you know, I've been talking about relationships now for, for five weeks, and tonight we've talked about some broad terms about relationships. Um, but I think the most important relationship to talk about tonight is the one I've just mentioned. This is who Jesus is. He's our healer. He's our restorer. He's our deliverer. He brings freedom to our life. God, God didn't come to oppress us. I mean, religion gives that impression. He didn't. He came come to bring freedom to people. He came to see people live lives that were like trees that are, are planted and bearing fruit. That's, that's what God gets a kick out of. And, uh, and even if you're here tonight, and maybe, I don't know, everyone's journey. Obviously, plenty of people here are really committed to God and have walked with God for a bit of a, a season. But you might be here and you're just sitting in on it. It's not really your world. But as I've spoken about it, there's something in your heart that's just sort of saying, you know what? I think that might be what I need. I don't. I can remember when I became a Christian at 21 years of age, I didn't even want to admit it to myself. I, like, I just wanted to keep partying on, but the problem was at 21, I'd been partying on since I was 13. At 21, the party was starting to get a bit repetitive, a bit dull and not real satisfying. What had promised to be really exciting had just become same old, same old, same old. And it hadn't borne fruit in my life. It had only ever taken from me. And maybe you're sitting there, and maybe your journey's like that, where it's like, you know, I've never really committed my life to God, or I've never really tried to follow God in any way, or given any credence to what He's got to say. But just hearing this tonight, knowing that God loves you, God wants to bring freedom to your life. God can bring forgiveness to your life. The things that people won't forgive, God can forgive that. And maybe you're here tonight, and you're just like, you know what, I'd I'd love to think that was true for me. And I want to encourage you to take a step of faith toward God tonight. And uh, in a few moments' time, I'm going to pray for everyone. And then I I want an opportunity to pray for you. If you feel like you're on a journey and you're ready to make a decision to, to like, open your heart up, give God a go, let Jesus come in and help you build your life differently maybe to, to the journey you've been on to this point. I want to give you that opportunity in just a few moments. So I wonder if we could all stand, if you wouldn't mind, and I'd really like to pray for you guys. If, if, if you're happy to, bow your head, close your eyes, and just give the people around you a little bit of privacy. But Father, I just thank you for a, a room full of great people. And we're all really different. We're all at really different stages of our journey. But the one thing we've all got in common is that you love us You have a plan and a purpose for us. And we have so much potential in our lives, even for maybe the the few of us that feel that we've wasted a lot of that potential. I, I know so well that you can bring so much more out of our lives. And I pray for that. I pray that every heart, every person, every precious person here would realize their destiny would fulfill their destiny, would would become people that build lives that are like trees planted by running waters, living waters, and, and their lives grow up, spring up and produce fruit and, and become ultimately incredibly satisfying and life-giving. And I pray that for each and everyone, no matter where we're at in the journey. You know, you might be here and you might feel... You've seen yourself somewhere in the message and you're just like, man, I, I just, I need God to help me in a particular area, whatever that is. You know, it might be the ability to have a tough conversation or, or to cut some things off from your life that are really not helping you at the moment or, 
you know, maybe to forgive someone or to just talk to someone, clear something up. Maybe a relationship needs to come to an end. Maybe, maybe a relationship needs to start. And you're sitting here thinking, now I've made up my mind. Well, I want to pray for you if you're in that valley of decision so much, if you're in this moment of decision. So uh, if, if you've got something specific tonight you just want to reach out to God for, would you just raise your hand right where you are? right where you are, just something specific. No one around you knows, no one around you is looking. They don't know what you're reaching out to God for, but Father, I thank you for every heart that's responding to you. I pray that you meet them right where they're at, right where they are. Just meet them and show them the next step. Give them courage, give them grace to go forward, whatever that means, just to go forward in their lives with the decisions they're making right now. Thank you, Father, for just gracing us tonight in Jesus name amen and then finally the last group of people I want to talk to is you know if you've been, if you've come into this place and you wouldn't say your journey has necessarily been hand in hand with God so far but you want to be you can leave tonight literally with a relationship with God it's not about getting religious or joining a church it's actually just a faith transaction in your own heart it's opening your own heart to Jesus and he's your healer he wants to bring restoration and freedom into your life, no matter what your journey's been. He loves you. And so I want to give you the opportunity to respond to Him. While every head's bowed, every eye's closed, but if you're here and, and that's you, we're going to pray a prayer in a few moments. We're going to put it up on the screen right now if we could. It's a very simple prayer. It's a prayer of commitment, a prayer of dedication, where you just open your heart. You ask God for His forgiveness. You ask Jesus to lead you and help you live your life the way that he wants you to help you help you to build your life and so if you're here tonight you just know that's me that's right where i'm at um would you be you know so bold would you be so brave as to raise your hand right where you are tonight that's awesome guys others you can put your hands down again others in this place yeah god bless you that's awesome great decisions others in this place as i look across just want to give it a few moments i won't prolong it i won't drag it out but this is just such an important decision. I made it at 21 years of age, been following Jesus now for 33 years, and uh, and I wouldn't have it any other way. It hasn't always been easy, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Come on, if that's you, you can join these other folk who've already responded. As I look across, just one more time, just raise your hand up. Just as I look across. Yep, fantastic. That is awesome. God bless you. Fantastic. Okay, how about we pray together? And uh, this is a very simple prayer, but, you know, if you've never prayed a prayer like this before, I just encourage you, make it your own. It says everything it needs to say. You're just coming to God really simply in faith and saying, come into my life. And, uh, and if you're, you're genuine about that, if you're authentic, I guarantee you will, and things will begin to shift for you. So uh, let's pray this together. The whole church is going to pray, but if you responded, I really encourage you to make this your prayer. As we pray, dear Jesus... I believe in you. Thank you for forgiving me. Come into my life and I'll follow you. Amen. Amen. Well, that's great. Why don't we give it up for people who just made a decision tonight. And uh, best decision I ever made. And I trust it's going to be the best decision you've ever made. It'll turn your life right around. You'll end up who knows where, but you'll be happy God got you there. And, and Robert's going to come and just let us know some next steps for tonight. So why don't we welcome Rob? Why don't we thank Pastor Chris? What a great message. Hey, if you just made a decision, whether you got to the stage of raising your hand or not, we would love to help you on that journey of following Jesus. And one of the most practical ways that we can do that is by getting a Bible into your hands or available out in the foyer. Just grab one uh, from the team out there. We'd love to get alongside you and, and help you take that next step in the decision that you just made. Is that cool? Who's had a good night? Who's enjoyed the relationship series? You know, I think we've been running that series for about six years now, and uh, I think it's one of the, the best series that we do as a church. Quick, uh, I guess, census. Hands up, who's single tonight? Here we go. Jeremy Nindock's in the media room. He wanted me to give him a special shout out. His hand's up too. Hey, I just saved you the hard slog of working out who's single at church. So maybe if this series has inspired you, you know, why not? Why not ask someone out for coffee tonight after our hangout? We are going to Walton Stores. It's going to be dope. It's a place to be. Don't forget, next Sunday night, repeat after me, there's no 6 p.m. 
we are heading to the carols in the park, so make sure you grab some friends, hook up with some people that are in the church and uh, sit with them, hang out with them. It's going to be great. Also, don't forget on the way out to grab service time flyers because service times are about to change heading into the Christmas season. But you guys are awesome. Have the best week. Make sure you get along to life groups if they're still running. But you have a good week. See you next Sunday.